The city starts preparation immediately after the last winter event. And uh, immediately when that event was over, we had a list of supplies needed, uh, repairs needed, and we brought the equipment in the garage here. Our fleet mechanics immediately started ordering parts, making repairs in preparation for the following winter, 10, 11 months out, we're ready to go. We uh, have a winter ops meeting where we will uh, get everybody together. Uh, we'll talk about past experiences and uh, go over the snow routes, the conditions, the worst spots of the city. We will then pair up the newer drivers with the experienced drivers and drive the routes. And then we will practice unloading and loading the equipment in good conditions so we're prepared when things are not great. We have uh, meetings with our groups and uh, so we call it our winter ops meetings. We discuss to the new hires what's going on in the process. Um, then we do on hands training where we load all the equipment up, the sanders, the plows, we chain trucks up. We go through them again checking for all their needed supplies and tools, flashlights, um, emergency equipment. And then we um, get in these plow trucks and we drive around the city. Each driver is assigned routes and they drive those routes in that plow truck to get the feel of the truck, to be aware of the obstructions that may be out there, the sea curbings, the islands, any road hazards. So that helps them prepare in advance for when we do have a snow event. We have 12 winter operation vehicles. We have 10 yard dump trucks with sanders and plows, five yard dump trucks with sanders and plows. Then we have three units that are de-icers, anti-icers. We have a 1600 gallon tank of de-icer. Um, he hits all of our main arterials and secondary arterials, the larger routes. Uh, we have a, a 300 gallon flatbed truck which is more mobile he can get into areas that we that the big truck can't he's hitting a lot of the bridges the steeper hills the smaller arterials secondaries and then a, a third truck that is also 300 gallons uh, flatbed that that also is also just dispersing anti-icing material on the on the routes ahead of a, an event when I'm at home after hours, I'm monitoring the weather. When I wake up sometimes one, two in the morning, the first thing I do is I'm monitoring the weather. A benefit to the city of Renton is we have a night sweeper operator. He's our eyes and ears in the off hours of the night shift, along with Renton police. When we know an event is coming, we try to get out at least sometimes a day in advance, sometimes a couple of days in advance. Um, when we apply our anti-icer, the purpose of anti-icer is to create a barrier, a, a saline barrier between the pavement surface and the ice particle. Um, it, it allows us to come back once we do get snow to then plow easier. It allows us to clear the roads quicker. So again, we monitor the weather very well. And, and that's my goal is to get the crew in before the event. And if they're calling for event on a Sunday, um, we'll have a group meeting on Friday and tell the guys, you know, they, they know they're all on call and they're all ready to go with one phone call from me. And that's what makes my job easy is these guys are 100% committed and ready to go when they get that phone call to come in and start plowing. Usually uh, we're pretty good about anticipating, uh, watching the weather, and so uh, when John gives us the call, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's go time, let's go, and uh, uh, equipment's uh, prepared and ready to go. We come in, we grab our equipment, we know our routes, and we head out. We've worked on kind of developing and redeveloping lessons learned for our, our winter operations snow plan. We always go by priority routes, which are our main arterials, our secondary arterials. And once those are completed, sometimes that can take a day, two, three days. But once, once our main and secondary arterials are safe and secure for travel, then we move into main roads through neighborhoods. Then if the event's long enough, then we might get into every street within a neighborhood. It, it's important that people are patient and understand that it does take us time to get throughout the, the entire city. My challenges are the hundreds of phone calls and emails I personally get on 
why I'm not here yet plowing their street. And we're trying to educate them that the main arterials are our focus during the beginning of the event, the multi-lane roads for public safety. We have to keep those high-speed roads open, free and clear for emergency response. So there's times in any event we might be doing circles on these main routes for one to two days and sometimes even three days before we get into a neighborhood. When we feel the main arterials are safe, that is when I'll disperse the drivers to branch off into the neighborhoods and start taking care of those streets. All of our winter operation vehicles are equipped with GPS in the truck. What that does is it is sending a signal to, our, to the computer telling it where that truck is, how fast it's going, if the plow is up, if the plow is down, if the sander or the de-icer is on or off and well, we can do a track and trace on each piece of equipment to know exactly where it's been in any operational period. So it gives us the tool through technology of ensuring that we have not missed anything. We technically have four shifts. We have a 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 12 hour shift, a 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. 12 hour shift, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. 12 hours, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. 12 hours. So the benefit of having the staggering shifts and the trucks always out during the shift changes, during the heavy commutes, the morning commute um, and the evening commute. You know, we always have a truck out in the field to, a, at times they're there if there's a situation, if we have vehicle accidents, we can get a truck there immediately to help clear the road or make it safer. Those trucks aren't invincible. Those trucks are very challenging to drive and it takes a highly professional skilled driver to learn how to operate those trucks safely. Um, they're not four wheel drive pickups. They are two wheel drive, heavy, oversized, big dump trucks with 11 foot plows. And most of our traveled lanes in Renton are 10 foot wide. Uh, we get into the neighborhoods. We're lucky to have sometimes nine foot spacing and and it makes it very challenging for these plow trucks getting in between the parked cars in the neighborhoods and the spin outs make it extremely challenging. I would say that the most stressful part is uh, the, st the steep hills, you get the ice, sometimes uh, you have to sand and back up a hill to make sure that uh, people can get down it safely. Uh, you know, as a system, uh, maybe carries on and uh, we try to keep everybody safe. And our role is just to maintain, make sure that everything's buddies rolling. If they roll a plow bit, then we gotta bring it in here and usually torch the bolts off and put new bolts in and flip the plow rubber or change the plow rubber. Sometimes we have to go out in the field and repair. Usually, if, like if it's a hydraulic failure, we have to do a clean up, you know, clean up the hydraulic mess and try and repair it as best we can, get it back going keep going. <laughs> so the most challenging thing that we have would probably be the sanders or, or the plows themselves. The sanders, um, sometimes we have to do an adjustment and if they're full of sand then that means we have to use a vector truck to suck all the sand out and then readjust the chain and get it back going. There's several different challenges. We have police come in that need Tire chains put on, fire department comes in, they tire chains put on. Sometimes the tire chains damage the vehicles, so we have to try and do the best we can to keep them going. Uh, I would say please pull over, uh, treat the snow plows as emergency vehicles, slow down, have patience, and you know, let us uh, move through the streets as quick as possible, and you guys can get uh, you guys can get to where you gotta go uh, sooner too. So please give us time, be patient with us, prepare yourself, be prepared to drive, be prepared to drive in the snow, make sure you, your tires are good. Um, ensure that, that if you are stuck, that you are st keeping yourself safe, stay in your vehicle if it's at all, at all possible. If you can't stay in your vehicle, get off the road, try not to walk in the roads thinking of what the operators are doing. They're working hard to try and get to your road, but it does take time, so please be patient. We get a lot of requests from private property, apartment complexes, condo complexes, churches, schools, asking us to come help bail them out of the snow. As, as government services, we cannot put 
public money to private interests. We're, we're in the business of tr serving the population as a whole of the city of Renton. We, we can't go on to private property. Um, when it comes to plowing, a lot of people call and complain because we've now, they've shoveled their driveway and now our plow truck has come through and blocked their driveway again and it makes them pretty unhappy. You know, we, we're really sorry. We don't really have any options on where we can put that snow, but a little bit of thought. Um, rather than pushing the snow from your driveway or sidewalk into the street, if you can pile off to the sides, behind the sidewalk, off to the curb, that helps when we come through. You're gonna have a little, little bit less snow pushed back into your driveway. But, but we apologize. And, and I'll tell you, the operators feel terrible that we have to block people in. There is no place else for us to put that snow. Reach out to your neighbors and, you know, if you can't shovel your own driveway, reach out and, and ask for help. If, if you're going to use salt on your sidewalks or your driveways, the salt crystal has to have moisture to it. Um, it will pull ambient moisture from the air, but it does need moisture in or, order to activate. As we all know, as the temperatures get colder, we have less moisture in the air and at, at ground level. So if you are going to use salt on your drive or your sidewalks, um, just simply spraying a little bit of, of water on top of that salt can put it into a saline solution. Don't overuse. More is not necessarily going to do better. Our city written drivers and mechanics, they take such pride, commitment, dedication in what they do for the public. Yeah, I, I can't do my job and be reliable at what I do if I can't count on my crew 100% and I count on my crew. We take care of the citizens of Renton in the best way we can in the most safest possible way and we're all committed and dedicated to do that.